Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to the Drinking Bros and Drinking Broettes crossover episode. Woo. You know it's got to be a big guest if we're doing a crossover episode yep. here. Uh, ugh, I hate to stretch out on this one, but I'm going to. Um, I, I've talked about The Bachelor on this show before. I was a little skittish about opening up about it. And then once I did, I was flooded with dudes, listeners who were like, dude, we watch it too. We, we, we got to watch it with our wife. And I was like, oh, shit. Well, after that, I was like, can we just get one of the bachelors on the show? Like, are we big enough yet? Um, I felt I like think, we were there. I think we got one of the best ones. I know. In my humble opinion. He's so good. He's I great. Know. He's great. We got Colton Underwood on Colton the show. Colton Underwood. You might remember him from the endless promos they had of jumping the fence. Yeah. Colton's going to jump the fence. No, Colton, no. no. They built it up the whole season. Yeah. The whole it was season. a good one, though. And yeah, I, feel, I feel like they do that with all of them, right? They do. Like, they, they always pull one clip um, in the last one. season, it was his it was mom. Peter's mom, yeah. Bring her, bring her home. home. Peter, bring her home. At least Colton's wasn't that cringy. Yeah. It wasn't. It His wasn't was like, whoa, what's he doing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, so we're going to interview him in a minute. Uh, one of the nicest guys, Dude. maybe, of all time. Yeah. No. Jesus, is he's good looking. I know. It hurts my soul. And he's I like forgot how good looking he three, is, too. Yeah. Because even last night on Twitter, I was you know looking at his Twitter and at him. And I was you like, forget. cool, I'll shout him out. And I was like, damn yeah. dude no, yeah no. and so i made sure to do my hair extra special to look yeah. good for him today <laughs> extra special we let's, did a let's listen. talk about that let's yeah. talk about i that. fucking majorly failed here okay look i don't know if it's a major fail i'm in quarantine mm -hmm. i am testing out random things and she's um, watching tiktok i've been a watching tiktok, TikTok. Oh, i got boy. lady listeners on the podcast asked me hey test out these products and i did and i look like a shit show <laughs> today not a shit show <laughs> Listen, I look like I, I think have, it's racist I, to say you look like I a look shit like show. a like I, <laughs> <laughs> for a white woman who looks like I have black hair, kind of yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And then if you actually look closer at my face, the self tanner I put on is very streaky, and I miss parts, so it's like white and tan. It's just it's a shit show. Let's just be real. And by the way, Still the gorge. skin is sloughing off of my feet at this moment because I did an exfoliating foot scrub for the ladies. Oh, okay. yeah. And were so you, I'm just falling apart. Were you worried that Colton was going to see your feet? Is that? No. I'm just no, curious we're doing like tests. We're testing stuff. We're testing stuff for, for the girls because they said quarantine products. Hey, what oh, can we do I like for that. our So I have like glue on nails. Quarantine. What can we do for our, our tan? What can we do for our feet for pedicures? And of course, I was like thinking to myself, I'm going to look hot as fuck like all these bitches with this hair curling thing. Mm hmm. <laughs> with Colton here. Yeah. I do you think it worked out for you? I don't think it worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> he is such a nice guy that he definitely bullshit at he me. He was like, you look great. <laughs> no. But we're so small in his video thing because we're so exactly. far yeah. away. He couldn't see, he couldn't see. He no. was like, like, who's this Mexican black white woman? Yeah. yeah. He like, didn't want to <laughs> say, he didn't want to say, oh, you look black because he thought maybe you were. Do you know what I mean? My name's Tiffany. Yeah, so he was like, oh, Tiffany, uh, I can't really see. She's super tan. What up, Tiffany? Yeah, <laughs> do you feel like Tiffany's a black girl's name? Kinda. <laughs> do you really? <laughs> yeah, well, because my whole life growing up, the only Tiffany's I ever met were other black girls. Really? Yeah, for the most part. Like, that's it. I think I guess it, that's right. Huh? Is it, well, as a dude, I, I remember also, the singer. She was white. I was, oh, yeah. I also grew up in St. Louis, right? Oh, from the Lou. So, from the Lou. So, yeah. all, you know, every girl that would meet me would be like, oh, my name's Tiffany, too. And I'm like, oh, am I the. One of the only ones in St. Louis? Yeah. With the name who's white. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. Did you wear a band-aid under your eye ever? Uh, I wore a band-aid on my face because of Nelly. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're from the Lou and you're proud, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud. You have to. Uh, be honest with me, ladies. Were you, were you guys nervous before you hopped on today? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I sat up straight. I had good posture the entire time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never do. I was very prepared for the interview. Uh, you, you were. Yeah, you, you were. You, so many notes. Yeah, you, you, you read the entire book, um, yeah. which is great. And like, look, man, anybody who's I've willing done... to put themselves out there like that yeah. in, a, in a public forum, it takes a lot. Yeah. It takes respect. a lot. Um, yeah, because it's, uh, it's not easy to 
write about your entire life, especially how personal he gets in it, you know? Yeah. And then also I've done interviews with people that have not even seen the movie yeah. that I've done. Yep. And it's very, I don't know. If there's other people in there that do, that's fine. But like I've had conversations with people that don't know what they're talking to me about. Yeah. And it just gets very surface and you can't really get deep. So I was like, well, let me just read it. See the movie. Read the book. Yeah, exactly. If you're if you're interviewing somebody about their book, yeah, read the book. Yeah, but he has so many other things. Like we can talk about Bachelor, we can talk about football, we can I mean he's like He's great. Yeah. He he's down to talk about whatever. So the book yeah. was just like a small part of it. Yeah, but I it, the two of you though look like contestants today. Like you guys were really going for it. Today, oh yeah, we were know? trying. Yeah, we tried. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like I'm bummed that like we were such a small picture mm -hmm. in his. I'm not in his phone. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me! <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. He's like, oh, they look cute, and then he zooms in, Gary, and then he's like, Ugh. 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 what was that? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm that? sure. I'm sure he just pukes in um, his all mouth. All the days I decided to do something different with my hair, like, and really that's what I was wondering day? Yeah. when you told me you did that. I was I know. very confused. Me too, because I thought I was gonna look like the girls on the box. But <laughs> I know. But here's the thing. Colton's such a sweet He's guy. So, sweet. so genuine. I think him. that's why I, I love him so much. And I think he changed the Bachelor, Bachelorette kind of whole machine. The whole game. Mm -hmm. He's a game, game changer, for a while because basically. Because everyone goes, oh, I thought you had to go to the end. I thought you had to go in Fantasy Suites yeah, with everyone. Right. I thought you had to do these things. And he was like, I no, I don't want to. they make you. Yeah, he's Which like, no. It's kind of what Peter was kind of blaming shit on. Like, oh, well, I mean... I mean, it was Hannah Ann left, so I guess I just stayed. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. Yeah. It's like, if no, you don't, we don't have to stay. You can just leave, bro. Like, the thing is, like, there's a, a skit in the state. Do you remember that show? Oh, yeah. Big fan of From state. MTV way back Michael in the day. Michael Ian Black state. and those guys. But yeah. anyways, they're, like, do this skit where they're looking. They have this jail, and there's just, like, a big open door. And mm -hmm. they're, like, can't go out that door. Wait, like, how are you going to escape? Like, one guy has, like, a whole escape plan, and they're, like, how are you going to do it? see that door you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like you can at any point yeah be like i'm done and colton kind of just proved that Correct. right where it's like before that you're like no you can't walk out that big open door yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. not allowed to <laughs> it's the bachelor you have to stay on it's like what who's what are they going to arrest you yeah. you can leave right yeah uh, let me ask you before we get to the interview with him uh, did you have you guys ever considered it like yes. when you were single going uh -oh. on the because I know you were up for naked and afraid and they yeah. called all the time. It's kind of a similar situation. Um, one of my friends was approached in L.A. out at a bar like they were actively scouting people like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, I think back you're good day, looking. What do you do? Yeah. Um, but now, you know, the show is so massive. Obviously, there's submissions and things sure. like that. But uh, was it something you guys had ever considered in your life of like, yeah, watch this. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. Or maybe no, try out for I it. only consider it now. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> now that you're both married. Uh, yeah. well, I'll say this. When Great. I first started watching Great. The Bachelor, it was so, I was so young. It was before I even joined the military. Right? Oh, shit. That's so right. Yeah. I was been watching it for, with my parents, with my mom and my sisters for the longest time. And it was one of those things. It never crossed my mind. I liked it, but never crossed my mind until later yeah. down the road. And I kind of like drifted off, didn't watch it anymore, and then kind of got back into it with girlfriends. And finally, when I was in a serious relationship with Chris, I was yeah. like, I could see myself doing this if I was actually single. You yeah. know? Yeah, it just seems so, I don't know. I don't think I could ever do it. I feel like it's I would just lot. be like Hannah Brown. I, I'm going to put my fucking foot down. Yeah, I could see you being you know the I mean? bachelorette, but I can't. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I would never want to yeah. compete against those other girls. And, no. like, get in the drama. I don't want to get in the drama. And just hang yeah. out with a house full of girls going after the same guy. That sounds yeah. like a nightmare. Right. But Bachelorette, I, I would just skip right to the Bachelorette. Do they do that? No. No, they don't. You have to be they don't in do the machine. Anymore. They don't but do they it anymore. Well, yeah, that's true. Because yeah, they even with this to. new one. It's a 38-year-old. Yeah, she was actually. She is deep in the machine. She's been on she's, it four or five times. Oh, and she, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And now yeah. they're 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 you know trotting her out at 38, maybe 39 by the time they go back to filming because they, they shut down production because of the coronavirus, Dude. obviously. So That is know. right. People do stay in this machine. And I'm oh, happy. Yeah. In paradise thing. Like she Absolutely. did Winter Games, Bachelor at Winter Games, whatever the fuck that is. That's a, that's a thing. That's a uh, thing, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Bachelor on Ice. No, I don't know. But they did. Yeah, she did Paradise. She did a season with Juan Pablo. She's like been yeah, doing Juan it. Pablo, I know that one. Since she was the age that most people are doing it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And Damn now it. here you go. She's still there. <laughs> she won't leave. And now she wants to really find love. Before she didn't want to, but now she really does. Wait, with 20-year-olds, though? Yep. Yeah. She really doesn't want to because what is the age? It's like 22, right, of most of the guys? Yeah. 22 to 30. But yeah. apparently someone was saying that they scratched like all those dudes, and it's 20, It's like 27 and up now only oh for her oh, yeah good. because apparently Smart. people made a big deal about it when they she sat should. down with chris harrison yeah and everyone was so concerned since peter's season was such a shit show mm -hmm. yeah. right they had to go that back to the said, drawing board listen we can't have this because people are already saying that you're almost 40 and you're having young 20 year old guys this is not going to work so we're going to get you men who are mature they need one season of the bachelor to work like i'm sorry colton he just changed it to did, where yeah. everyone's just like that's not, what i'm saying they they're not that. getting engaged anymore they're not like doing it mm -hmm. so they need to like get back on track. They need one season to like go the way it's supposed to go. Well, the beauty of this thirty-eight-year-old woman is she has to get married at this point. She's she's, she's gonna die in like <laughs> right. Two Can years. you imagine if she so, also at the end was like, "No, nah, I'm good." But yeah, but <laughs> oh my god, right? You're like, oh my god, okay. No, but with her, Jeez. she uh, she finally is in a position to be like, "Hey, dude." Uh, we're getting married and it's you know well this is serious yeah and you have to do this by the way i'm not just 22 considering marriage never been in love before yep. no i've yes been through the gambit listen this is it yeah. yes yeah so we'll see what happens but uh if if the dude walks out on her i know holy shit that's it, that's it all bets are off at that point mm. do you bet on the bachelor you I, can cause, yes cause I, was say, I know you do betting yep and I, I would know want you, to. Next you bet time. it on, you know, venues being closed. And I was going to ask when we were on with Colton, if at all you have ever, you know, bet it on the Bachelor, yeah, Bachelor so winner. On mybookie.com, uh, who's our Drinking Bros sports sponsor, a Drinking Bros casino will double your deposit. Um, you can bet on all of that stuff. The problem was, and I would say maybe about two or three years ago, they they stopped doing it. Is you have all these sleuths now online who oh, are that's true. taking pictures, finding out, you know, dropping spoilers and all that other stuff about who's in the finals, who's left, and everything else. In today's society with phones and internet and everything else, like, you know, you can snap anything anywhere, anytime, and it's like, it's so hard to keep it a secret. I'm I'm genuinely surprised yeah. if I am surprised at the end. You know what I'm saying? Like, because usually I already know who it is or what it's going to be. Um, that's why Jesse, when, when we play along at home, she'll make me pick the people opening episode. Smart. So that way that's there's what no Jimmy Kimmel and back. his wife do. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And his wife picks like the three that like are the final three almost every oh, single yeah. time. I do too. Can't you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but we did too. Yeah. For the most yeah. part. I think we, we thought did. Kelly, like she was an extra I thought one, Kelly would get farther. But apparently Kelly and him are hanging out now in quarantine. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Are you kidding? They no. They did get farther. I did not know that. They're yeah. hanging out in quarantine trying to be the new... Tyler, Tyler and, Hannah, and Brown. Hannah Brown. So Peter, that was the only season where, to, to me, like, I, I, I genuinely didn't know because it, all of his choices were so fucking dumb. Dude, they were. That I was like, I, I don't, I don't know what this you guy's gonna do, and I, mean, I would have lost that money. We I still lost had Hannah Ann. We still had Matt. Yeah. I mean, we got him, but yeah. still, yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous. Uh, either way, it's gonna be fun. Uh, Jamie, let's go ahead and hook in Colton Underwood from The Bachelor. Mm. Welcome, Colton Underwood, to the Drinking Bros podcast and Drinking Broettes podcast we crossover had to be episode. Here. We had to be here for if Colton. If we didn't, the girls were going to kill us. <laughs> I know. Yeah. The listeners were going to kill us. <laughs> Col Colton, we're, we're amped to have you today. Uh, Tiffany, I, she did a little something extra to her hair today. I did. I think you were nervous. Listen, I was really nervous. I had to, <laughs> you know, kind of show off for Colton, and then it backfired on me, folks. It, it did. <laughs> I look like a completely different person. My hair's never this curly ever in my life. So I, I know, like it. It looks great from where I'm sitting. There it is. You're too, he's too nice. He's it's too nice. nice. <laughs> it's too nice. It's I'll very, say this. It's very Rachel Dozel. Uh, I'm getting bored in the quarantine. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of Broet listeners asking for, hey, what do I do? What do I do? Mm -hmm. And uh, we call this the um, quarantine mess. Yeah. Quarantine it's, treat yourself. It, yeah. Treat yourself. Um, so, Colton, we won't talk too much about uh, you having the virus. I'm sure you've talked about it so much. But how are you feeling? Better? Good. I'm now. doing so much. I'm doing so much better. Yeah. The right. uh, I got. I was very, very lucky, very fortunate to have a doctor that prescribed me the medications right away without question. And right. I, I put a lot of credit and belief behind that that the medication really helped me recover quickly. 
right? And you look great. Like, yeah. and no, Thank you. In, in a non homosexual <laughs> way, but kind of. Like, I, I would consider, you know, switching, obviously. Sure. Well, you're sure. An attractive thanks, for having, man. thanks for having me on. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> you're, you're an attractive man, and it's, that's, that's hard for someone like me to admit. I want to talk about also, uh, oh I read your book. It was yes. okay. really, really good. Congrats. I loved Thank it. You. By the way, that's so awesome. Thank you guys. I know. I like that it was, I like a peek behind that curtain always because I'm always like looking at The Bachelor, like, what is going on? So mm. you really were honest about that, and I love that. Um, yeah. What I learned from the book, though, is that you're very good at quarantine. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're okay with staying home, right? So are you kind of yeah. over it or are you into the quarantine? Is it good? You know what? It's so crazy because so on the show, there's a <clears throat> there's a lag for four months between filming and then airing. And I have to Cass and I had to hide our relationship oh. for about four months. So we've sort of prepped uh, that we joke. <laughs> I joked with the Randolph family because wow. I'm at Cassie's house in Huntington Beach. OK, um, quarantining with her family. Perfect. We sort of joke like we prepared for this because we did this quite a bit during the season because we couldn't be caught outside yes. together. We couldn't, you know, so we always had to keep it super secretive. So you guys wow. are like, yeah, I'm just corn. Like yeah, that's just it's life. Just, it's dude. just another day at the job. So nice. right. Here's, right. Here's a here's a quick tip. If you're gonna quarantine again, if this happens again, go on the Bachelor first, and then that way you'll be prepared <laughs> for, it. for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it preps you for it. Um, like Jesse said to piggyback off that. Congrats on the book. Um, how Thank hard you. was that to uh to to write a book? I've I've written a few myself, and uh, it, it's it's a task, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's it was to be honest with you at the beginning, it was a little intimidating. You know, I had somebody, you know, ask, "Hey, would you have any interest in writing a book?" And I was like, uh, "I don't know if I have the time or the skill set to do that." Mm -hmm. And um, just the whole process, to be honest with you, is so so fluid and so easy. But um, I will tell you, the hardest part for me was really tapping into the emotional side of it, um, and it was very. It ended up being very very therapeutic. Like I I. Full disclosure, like I canceled my therapy sessions for the whole three months I wrote it. Really? And I just talked to my writer. Like it, it was nuts. So yeah, like, that's kind of what it, it seemed that like. that therapeutic. Yeah, yeah. That's super awesome though. Yeah, you were you were yeah. unbelievably honest and candid in this book. And uh, yeah. I, wa I wonder what the reviews have been like for you personally uh, <clears throat> so far that, you, you know, you've gotten back from it, the feedback you've gotten. Um, it's been it's been good. It's been everything and more than I could have probably wished for because that was the whole goal in it is to be very transparent um, I mean, I, I think that there were certain situations I'm 28 and I wrote a memoir, which sort of seems weird. It's like, okay, why are you doing this dude? Yeah. But like, <laughs> and when I take a step back and I look at some of the things that I've been through as far as, you know, it might not seem like big deals, but I still think those things can compound if you internalize a lot of your issues. And for me, I found out that that's what happened to me. So I was like, Hey, if, if I can have this platform to help one or two people out, you know, talking through my parents' divorce, talking through me growing up, you know, very conservative in a, in a um, faith based family, but yet still trying to figure out what I believe in and where I draw the line and where my values come from. Um, I, I felt like it could be beneficial and I could really help people. Yeah. What was the hardest thing for you to open up about, you think? Um, it was there was always sort of a, a, a fine line of realizing it's my book i need to tell my story and my side of things without crossing the line of oversharing my parents divorce and details there um same with some of my you know some of my exes and even mm -hmm. my current relationship so it's trying to find that fine line but then for me personally i think opening up about my just my struggle with my identity of where i found myself lying in certain situations i think that was just sort of hard to face the truth because i sort of put that off to the side and I always had a distraction in my life whether it was football distracted me then I went to the TV shows and distracted me I never really dealt with any issues head on yeah because uh, you know speaking of your exes um, I was wondering if you had called them in advance and said hey I'm writing a memoir about my life you might be mentioned in here and what their reaction to it was because you were talking about Ali Raisman being in there I did I yep. mean I didn't want to give away too much but um, I just wanted to know if you guys were cool and obviously you had to talk to her about it i i, I actually didn't i didn't you talk did. to anybody about it okay. really no. okay um and here here's my reason why um i i kept her 
away from out of the show completely. Mm-hmm. Um, I had, yeah, had which... that con- I had that written into my contract that they that was off limits. Everybody respect that wish it those wishes. I wanted to say um, I respected that for sure. Yeah, because they would have yeah. ran with that. But go ahead. Yeah, and I didn't want to be a distraction or anything. But I also think for me, through writing that, even it, sound, it seems weird. Like, why would you go on a show if you didn't have closure? Well, I never really got a lot of closure out of that relationship, and yeah. I just sort of took it for what it was. I was like, okay. We ended things. She obviously doesn't want to talk anymore, so we didn't have our conversation. So I was like, I'm going to keep it very, like, I have nothing but great things to say about her. I still have a lot of love and appreciation for her and what she's doing, what she stands for. So that was sort of my approach with it is even everybody, I'm not writing this book to tear people down. I didn't want to write this book to take shots at anybody. I just wanted to share my side of things and always keep it respectful. So I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like I ever really had to be like hey by the way i wrote this about you i hope it's okay i don't want to ask for permission because in my opinion like they were it was my this is my book to share my side of things and maybe maybe i took something wrong and if people want to communicate with you know with me later but nobody's reached out nobody's no i mean nobody's said hey that was that was terrible why'd you put that in there Uh, there hasn't been any of that yeah you didn't say anything bad which you know really was just from your perspective so but I just didn't know if you guys I totally understand though because that was that was something I I did go back and forth with hey do I want to reach out hey do I want to send a courtesy email but after reviewing and reading it over and over I realized you know I'm not shedding any new light into a situation that's not mine or a story that's not mine Mm -hmm. to tell um other than just my perspective and my side of things no, that's Smart. true. Sure, yeah, because I, I wrote my best friend's memoir, uh, Matt Best, who I, I think you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, yep. I, wrote, I wrote Matt's <laughs> book, and it was the same way where I said, look, is there any relationships that are off limits? Is there anything in your personal life that is off mm-hmm. limits that you don't want to talk about? And, you know, he had to sit with it as well and say, look, this is my story. This is a story I want to tell about my life. I'm not really so much concerned with the other people as I am about just being honest to myself and telling my story yeah and then you know he was the same way he didn't slam anybody uh the only person he did we renamed her um a different i renamed so i renamed people too so all the (laughs) producer names are are made up in there um all of my high school i didn't want to my whole thing is i didn't want to bring attention to anybody who wasn't asking for attention so like i like that and and i'm not saying ali was asking for attention but she's a she's a public figure so she's already used to it so I changed all the high school, all my high school names, and then also all the production names. That's smart. smart. That's, yeah. what, that's, what we, that's what we did as well. Because yeah. there was you one girl who was like, hey, man, if you wanted to, yeah. now's the time you could really burn her down. And he was yeah. like, no, 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 we can't. We can't. Well, and you probably know this from writing, but that's a slippery slope, too. You ask one or two people for their opinion yes. or their yes. questions, and then they insert it. And it's like, okay, like this is supposed to be my way to vent and my way to like express <laughs> myself. Right. And how much am I going to let you put in your thought I, I don't yeah. know I just found it easier to just be like let me write the book let me do this and then we'll go from there it well, is and I think I like you that. took the right direction on it like that that that's the smartest way to go is what you're right Thank once you. you start asking people about it um then they've got their own stories to tell and you're like hey man that, ne- yeah. that wasn't necessarily true what you said so I'm gonna yep. give my yep. side and then and then go from here um, it seems like you went about it the right way, though, because it's having a lot of really good feedback and reviews, especially on Amazon. I saw you posted on yeah. Twitter the other day, well, and everyone's yeah. loving it. Yeah, no, it's been so cool. That's why I was like, if you guys want, drop a review, because I love reading, you know, people's feedback, good, good, bad, and you know, I don't, I don't care which. I just want to hear, you know, what people think of it. And so far, the reviews have been great, and um, yeah, it's exciting. I think when you're just open Mm -hmm. and honest there's nothing really and you've said this a little bit in the book it's like you can't really fault people for being if you're just totally yourself and open and honest what are they gonna say do you know what I mean like there's no you didn't do anything that they could really tear you down talk shit about yeah now if you were writing a fictionalized cop drama or something sure then they would be like man of course course. that that Colton sure can't write a fucking cop drama um (laughs) Uh, yeah yeah (laughs) Two undercover cops from Illinois by Colton. Um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Is there any dreams in the future writing any other books? Um, you know, I'm, I want to see how this one all plays out. Like you said, it's a it's a lot of work. It, it was yeah. a lot. It was yeah. three months. I full disclosure, I hired a ghostwriter to help me out with sure. it. Same with you know, obviously your buddy helped you helped your buddy out. Um, and 
it was so it was still an intense project so we'll we'll see yeah. i don't know i think i need to get a couple more years if i want to do something more about myself let's get yeah. some more experience going um but who knows maybe a children's book i, I don't know I think go. Yeah. if, if you, you and cassie get married that. and have kids yeah. Like, yeah. that would be great you could do a little children's book that's a perfect opportunity That'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah, the, yeah the reason i asked i asked matt in the middle of this because you know when you start getting in a groove of writing a book there's pages and you read them and you're like, oh man, this is the greatest thing ever. I can't wait for the next one. And then three months later, you're like, yeah, man, I definitely don't feel like doing that again. That was a, right. it's like climbing yeah. a mountain every single time. So yep. uh, yeah, yeah, I understand I'll take it. it. I might take some time off and then maybe revisit it down the road. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so the ladies had some bachelor questions yeah, for you. Obviously. We do. Um, <laughs> is that, that all right? Is, it, look, and the reason why we do we want to do this joint show together is so I, I'm married to the the hot blonde here, Jesse. Um, she is the <laughs> one who not the hot brunette, not the yet. hot br brunette. Yeah, uh, with, not Rachel uh, Dolezal. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> anybody <laughs> who is married, any guy out there who says, "Oh man, fuck the bachelor, forget the bachelor," no, they're, they're, they're lying. watching. They're lying because they oh, have 100%. to. percent. Yes. <laughs> My husband watches it with 100%. me all the time. Hundred percent. All the time, and he actually you know hated it at first. And then once he started to watch it, he goes, this show actually makes me look pretty good for the most part. Yes. And he would sit there and get in with it with me and make opinions and judgments. And then all of a sudden, guess who's going to win? And we would get into it together and we both loved it. And guess what? Yeah. Yeah. It worked yeah. out very well. Do you well. find that, Colton? Like, yeah. You guys probably have more dude up to you? fans, I bet, right? Oh, I think, yeah. So I actually had that conversation with a lot of the producers. I My viewership skewed uh, like more heavily male than they wow. had it was like the sports background i think sort yes, of interest people and yes um uh, yeah it was it was sort of funny my favorite line though is like when i'm in an airport or like out to eat and like a dude comes up to me and he goes my wife would totally kill me if i don't get a picture with you i'm like right yes i, I was like but she's like, you. or or the, it's it's the line, the classic line of she made me watch. Like I tried, uh. I tried my hardest not <laughs> yeah. to, but she made me watch. I was like, dude, you are turning that on and recording exactly. it for her every Monday. For sure, every and you're loving every second of it. Stop. Every night. Yeah. It's the only way to keep a happy relationship. You got to watch The Bachelor. Right. Um, yeah, because right. on, on Drinking Bros, I you know I've thrown it out there kind of casually a couple years ago, and I got s swarmed with uh, you know listeners who were just like. Dude, I have to watch The Bachelor for my wife, too. But then we all yeah. get into it together, and it becomes like a fun thing. And I was more amped to have you on than, than one of the females. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah for sure. Yeah. Well, the, if you just embrace it, it's, yeah. it's actually it's actually a, a weird – it's like a guilty pleasure, right? It's, it a, it's, a, it's a guilty pleasure for America, I think. For sure. Yeah. For and sure. you guys, if you watch with your girlfriends – husband you know wives whatever you're gonna get laid so anyway yes. i was gonna say that works <laughs> it's you a really good aphrodisiac that's all i'm Skip saying like, it's a, it's a, yeah, 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 yeah 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 that's why that's why that's why chris watches it mainly exactly. with me listen well, here's the thing i'll say too i think it's really good for some self-reflection right you look and see what other people are doing and you're like oh man have i done that in my i don't want to date you're like i don't want to date or anymore yeah. maybe this is what i should and shouldn't look for in my next relationship or these qualities i i that's i find myself doing that too like oh, it's man, so like, diverse it and is. that's that was something that um i resonated with just coming out of the sports background too what was so cool and appealing of the show is you know in, in different locker rooms you have different cultural backgrounds different up upbringings whether it's ethnically financially wh whatever the situation mm -hmm. may be and that's sort of the same thing on bachelor bachelorette is yeah you have all these people coming in <laughs> and you know there's going to be arguments but it's like at the end of the day we each have our own lives. We each have our own beliefs. And yeah. it's it's just like it's a big, giant social experiment. That's for sure. It's so true. It is. Um, and, and to me, with your football background, because we, we obviously host a huge sports show as well. Did you watch Jesse Palmer's season and say to yourself, all right, well, Jesse played football. He was he was a pimp. And then afterwards, he went on the show <laughs> and his career yeah. exploded after that. I mean, he's on he's hosting things in Britain <clears throat> now. What's the UK oh, mail show? I mean. He hosts everything, that guy. He's close to Seacrest now. I mean, he's doing everything. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Was he Was he one of the first people for you where you watched it and said, all right, I think I could do this because I've got the sports background as well? Yeah, it was interesting because um, as I was playing football, I was enrolled in their um, – they do a good job of setting you up for your next step. And for me, I was on practice squad, so I was like, dude, this ain't going to last forever. You're not going to have a 12-year <laughs> career. Right. So right. I was always preparing myself for the next thing. So I was taking broadcast on um, boot camps. Mm-hmm just to help with you know on the, on tv and on camera presence and stuff oh, nice. which 
um, helped out. But yeah, Jesse was one of those that, you know, I sort of looked at and was like, you know, after all this is over, that would be an ideal career for me. Cause that is something I'm into right now is, is hosting and, um, you know, still, still somewhat TV things, whether it's another, I don't know if I would do another completely drawn out reality show, right? but I, I like to, I, to be very frank and honest. I like being on camera. I like having a platform. I like yeah. having a voice to like share my opinions with. If you don't agree with me and you don't agree with me, but at least, you know, I'm speaking my mind. So yeah, he's done, he's done an awesome job too. What I like about Jesse is he's done a really good job sort of distancing himself from the franchise a little bit of not yeah you know, he's I, not almost, I almost definitely. forgot i almost forgot he anymore. was on it yeah exactly and that's uh, to not the goal for me but what was nice about this book is that this is sort of my final hurrah with the bachelor nation of being like here's my story here's what happened i'm going to close this close this book and that's going to be the end of the chapter for bachelor you know? yeah, yeah that's what it so that's what we're going to ask yeah that's what it felt yeah. like it didn't really feel like you were trying to keep yourself in the machine as i call it you were yeah. kind of saying goodbye. I'm done. You guys can't say anything else about me because I've told you pretty much everything, which I love. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Really quick on the sports thing, I want to see if it's okay if Ross can guess which was the Raider that hurt your shoulder, just from the year. What year was it? Yeah. What year? Um. It was 2000. Seven? 17? 17? 17. Ooh. I think yeah, it was a little bit of a lag, but yeah, 17. Let's see. With you being a tight end, it would probably have been a linebacker. I don't think I publicly, I haven't publicly admitted, or I haven't publicly put this person out there. Oh, you haven't? Was it the oh, person sorry. that got I heard it. I listened to, no, your, you, I listened to your podcasts and stuff, and you did one with these guys oh, did, at this golf tournament thing. Do you remember this? Mm, I did put him out there, didn't <laughs> and I? They like, I'm sorry. I'm did sorry. I don't you? mean to go deep cut, but uh, oh, no, I may good, follow good, your good. work a little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just thought it was funny because you said the year to the guy. You were like, who do you think it is? And you said, you didn't actually say it, but you go, why don't you guess? It's 2017. You were playing mm -hmm. for the Raiders, right? Yeah. Did he yeah. Did he just get traded to the Bears? <laughs> <laughs> All right. He did. Okay. So, yeah. anyways, so we'll get. You know to what's you. so funny is he reached out to me <laughs> with the bachelor. He reached out when I became the bachelor. Him oh, and Derek did? both did Derek Carr. They like showing so much support and love, and it was oh, so nice. like to me. That's so cool because here I am, a practice squad guy, and Cleo and Derek never once treated me. And I wrote about Derek in my book, actually. Yes. Yeah. But um, they never once treated me like a practice squad player, which. And uh, neither did the Chargers, but like that, that was what was so cool is like, you have some of the most elite athletes that are still respecting your skill set to get you to a certain level. And yeah, I, I don't that. know, it was just like those, that little, those little details is what makes them so successful. Oh, absolutely. And look, love if it. anyone gets hit by Khalil Mack, their career is over. Um, that's, that still goes yeah. on today. Like for the most part, the guy, the guy's the best. Part. He's the best there is. <laughs> He's a complete animal. <laughs> Um, yeah. but, but in a way, though, you know, I think the reason probably why most of those guys are respectful of it is you're always one play away from losing your entire career. <clears throat> and that's the bitch of the NFL is you don't have guaranteed contracts, which how the NFL PA didn't negotiate that in this last deal is, is beyond me. Because even for practice squad guys, you guys get a, yeah. you know, a certain amount of money and then that's it. If We're, you weekly. Hurt, yeah, We're yeah. weekly. We're yeah. weekly. Yeah. Squad. yeah. So like you don't you don't know what's in store for you the next week. I always said that, too. I think the NFL can do a better job. Um, I actually was just talking, I think I was doing an interview with Donnie Wahlberg and I was t telling him the same thing. I was like, NFL can do such a better job providing more resources and sort of contingency plans mm -hmm. for their athletes. Because I mean, I took pride in my role. I, I was, I was, my role on the team was to get my teammates prepared and ready for the games. Mm -hmm. I knew that it's not like as a practice squad player, course i wanted to play on sundays but like realistically i knew i wasn't suiting up to go play on monday night football like i knew what yeah. my goal what my goal on the team was so i think that people like the the league needs to do a better job of understanding that these people are still risking their lives and risking their bodies every single day and they need to be compensated if Absolutely. it's not financially at least with the protections because I wrote, you probably read it in the book too. I had yeah. to fight to get money for my shoulder. Yes. Like I had yeah. to, I paid for that out of pocket, went broke because I couldn't figure, I couldn't figure out how to get the support. And thank God I have a great family. Thank God I have a dad who exactly. could loan me money while that was all going on. I couldn't imagine, 
I couldn't imagine if, like some of my friends and some of my families that I played college ball with, like if they would have went through it, they would, they would be on the streets. And it's like, how do you, or they just would be walking around with a broken shoulder for, uh, for however long until they could afford to fix it. Yeah. Man, that's so sad. Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing I thought when I read that was just like, dude, what if you didn't have help? Yeah, but yeah, because right. uh, we've had a lot of NFL players on our on our show, and and we've interviewed them. Some are some are in there to win, others are there of like, hey man, fuck the NFL. I just want the biggest possible contract I can get with the 100%. most guaranteed money, and I don't even care what city I'm in. And I'm not I'm not going to out one of the guys who said this, but he's playing in a city that is less than desirable. And I said, hey <laughs> man, where'd you buy a house there? Because I I lived there for a year, and he goes, uh, oh, I didn't even bother with that, my man. I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, I'm renting a condo. I bought a mansion somewhere else because as soon as that deal is up, I'm getting out of this city. And I was like, yes. Wow. Yeah. And he goes, look, the NFL and, doesn't care about me. Why should I care about the NFL? Dang. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that, and that's what I think I struggled with towards the end is like, I found myself playing the sport more for money mm -hmm. than playing the sport because I loved it. Like I had the previous 16, yeah. you know, 15 years of my life. So yeah. was it that last injury that led you to The Bachelor? Like, when, when was the moment where you were sitting on your couch and you were like, you know what, football's not working out. I, I think I could be on The Bachelor That's and I I'm could thinking. kill it. Yeah. yeah, well, he actually talks about it in the book, but you were just taking a walk, huh? Yeah, well, so so it was sort of weird because I sent, I was, the Allie relationship was right after the Raiders. And she actually went through my injury with me and, like, was we were dealing with all that. And then, yeah the breakup happened right when I was sort of on the mend, like coming back and like be, becoming fully, you know, my shoulder was fixed. My head was clear. I had money in my bank account from the, you know, the settlement and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, finally felt like I was getting my life back together. And then that, you know, that happened. And that sort of, that happened, you know, my dog passed away, which seems oh. really weird, but those two things sort of yeah. put me in a spiral. Dude, so I was heartbreak. sitting in my yeah. dad's and I, and I, at the time I was still living with my dad because I had to move, move back in. Um, but I was visiting my brother downtown Denver and I was out for a walk and that's sort of how it all came to be. And I saw the casting sign for bachelor for bachelor, which means all the girls were there. And then, um, I just walked in and did the interview and the rest, you know, Dang. sort of worked out for didn't me. Some guy, didn't somebody come out and grab you and kind of like, have you like bring you in to be like, Hey, come talk to us. Yeah. So I walked in and there was like, <clears throat> there was like, a station where they hand you paperwork and stuff yeah, which yeah, I yeah. grabbed and then I was like it was all girls so I was like well what am um, I doing <laughs> I was like what do I like do, can I be here like that's literally I think what I said and like, yeah come on up with us and I went up and like immediately went into like an interview and sort of there was it was like I skipped a, a lot of the steps I don't know nice. what it, right what the protocol was but yeah yeah it was it was cool nice um well it looks like well can we get to a couple bachelor questions you, really quick before you have to go yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, we're, we're not on a time limit so well, let's say away. so with your book you coming out with your book you had a contract with you know um the bachelor right abc before mm -hmm. now i'm guessing your contract is up since you've written this book and you're kind of dishing a little bit more on bachelor nation yeah is that correct yep. <laughs> yeah so with that being said we have listeners who want to ask you some questions and the number one question that all of our listeners want to know is how betrayed um, do you feel by the producers or did the producers, how, you know, how much did the producers really kind of fuck you over during the bachelor? So, that's so a, that was another question, fine line that while writing the book, I wasn't, <clears throat> I, I wasn't trying to like take shots or slam and I've said things in interviews, but I've said the truth. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to like take anybody down in the book. I was just trying to shed light and maybe it allowed viewers to understand why certain situations happen that maybe I got critiqued on during the season because of editing and stuff like that. Um, but there were moments that I didn't agree with the way that the show was going or running. And um, I tried to pick my battles. I put that line in there too. You know, I talked to, to Ben Higgins and even Chris Harrison. It's like, just pick your battles, like fight for what you believe in when it's appropriate. You can't fight every single time. You can't resist every time, which I sort of understood. I have a TV show to make. But at the end of the day, here's what I'll say is they, yes, they did a lot of things that frustrated me. And yes, they did things that I found out about that made me mad and upset. And at the end of the day, I still am appreciative of them because I'm with Cassie and I got what I yeah. came for out of the show. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't sense. know if that makes sense. And I don't want to be too politically correct, but like, 
yeah, I yeah, do yeah, no. like trust me I like I'm fr- I get frustrated beyond belief I get upset I get mad I get angry with them but I'm still like I look at Cass and it's like without them I wouldn't have her so it's like worth it of course for sure of course and, and I think you know in my opinion because I've watched it so many years with with her now that uh you love it, it. stop being it stop I do. making it I abs- no I, abs- I absolutely <laughs> love joking. it I, i'm, I'm a huge joking. colton fan you were actually I, rooting for colton to be the I bachelor before yeah yeah but anyway. i blush up oh, and i appreciate that I, yeah, yeah. and I, I told her i was like on that season i was like dude if they don't make him the bachelor they're not doing life right they're not doing life right um, and yeah. then you know you go on again and it's the it's the classic jump the fence you know uh season obviously and i felt like that season changed the game Me too. where um, once you, you were the first person that I remember to just take control of kind of your life and your relationship and the situation you were in and saying, Hey yeah. man, we're done filming. I'm going to jump this fence and get out of here. And I feel like after that, going into Peter's season, this last season, um, they threw more kind of roadblocks in his way so that, you know, he couldn't leave or there were more problems in case something happened. Like, like what happened with you again? Do you feel like yeah. that was the case? Because Peter, it, it just seemed like so so much weird shit was going on his season. I was like, man, yeah. I think that stems from what Colton did. Um, I don't know. Like from for me, I do remember. Like I just I was over it. I was to a point where I was like, I'm Colton after this. I'm not the Bachelor. I'm not mm-hmm. gonna like for for anybody who always asks like, do you have any advice for the next Bachelor or Bachelorette? And it's like, just remember, you have a life after this. And whatever happens on this TV show is great and all, but you you have a life to take care of. So the TV and the cameras and the notoriety, all that goes away. And you're left with whatever decision you make at the end of the show. So um, for me, I was like, I don't want to keep doing this show anymore. Like, I can't do it, especially if I'm risking losing the person who I fell in love with and I want. Yeah. Um, as far as Peter's, my opinion there, like full disclosure, I didn't watch, but I obviously have social really? media and I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the arena. PTSD, so like, I know I'm sure. How yeah. do you so not watch Colton? That's crazy. To I me. had, I had PTSD. Did you? I did really you? told you. I really did. Yeah. I, I really did. Like, that must be hard. Yeah, dude. You're like, I don't want to see you this. You watch it Like after it's, it's so, when you've seen it's behind so weird the curtain. to say, but I've just watched it completely differently. Did you yeah. watch Hannah Brown season or no? I watched maybe an episode or two okay. and same with like Peter Cass- Cassie watches. So like I would, I would catch it every once in a while, but like if she was in her room watching it, I would go out and okay. really, Brown, okay. you know, you dated Hannah Brown technically. So I was curious, I can see you not watching hers, but yeah. Peter's I'm curious how that would have worked. Out. Yeah. Cause like you played, you played in the NFL. Do you not watch NFL games? Like you were in it, my man. I, I didn't for 2018. Yeah. You're I did it for a year. Yep. I it mu- it's just it must just be like my coping mechanism yeah. mm-hmm. is just ah, avoidance. Um, yeah. But I, I just remember not. I, I think also it had to do with the injury and I was dealing with NFL lawyers and the teams and it was yeah. getting weird. I think that had yeah. a little bit to do with it. But I, I don't know. Maybe that's just my, my coping mechanism. Maybe I'm petty. I don't. Maybe I'm. <laughs> no, I, don't, stop. I don't know what. Stop. I really don't know what it I is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if I was on the Bachelor yeah. or Bachelor, I don't think I'd want to watch no. more seasons because I'd just be like. I think I might be I might be frustrated a little bit too, going, "Oh my God, they did that same thing to me," mm-hmm. or "Oh, I wonder if that was edited bad." Or well, my whole know. thing is like the whole Victoria date with Chase Rice. That oh, like God. I know right? Chase and I know crazy. what happened. Like that doesn't like that's not cool to do. Yeah, but no. you're, like I would be fear if I, if that was me in that position, I'd be furious that was even a thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, that's so easily avoidable when you have so many girls left to take on a date. Yeah. You know, that, <laughs> that was so, so set up. Like, that was I really love good. that you said that. That's so, exactly what I was thinking. Based upon what you heard of a season, then what what's your take on it? Of, uh, um, I mean, I think at the end of the day, they could both look and be like, we definitely could have done things better. Mm-hmm. Same with my season, but I feel like um, he could have he could have been guided better. He could have been helped out. Yeah. Do you have an opinion on his parents at all or no? Or on his mom? Have what? Do you have an opinion on his mother? Oh, on Peter's mom? She got a lot of screen time. Yeah. Oh, his here's or here's his what family? I always try to keep in perspective because I actually was frustrated with other past leads um, when they spoke out against me mm-hmm. just because, and I, I've been hypocritical of that too because I've been sort of critical on Peter, not knowing exactly what happened but behind the scenes, but knowing sure. a little bit. So I try sure. to show his mom a little grace with editing and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. 
uh, like even like the live was frustrating because I'm like, uh, maybe just like I remember my mom texting me because she watched it. I didn't. And yeah. it's like, oh thank gosh. God I didn't have to go yeah. to your life now. Like, <laughs> oh thank God gosh. all this didn't happen. I was like, oh man. Because I do feel bad because like that's his family, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's not like his mom didn't technically sign up for the show. I mean, they were very, very involved in the filming of it. Right. But I, I, feel, I feel for him a little bit there. Sure. Yeah, I do remember from your season, your dad um i really liked him but he sort of kind of knew what he was doing like he knew about the bachelor do you know what i mean and i was like dang like colton's dad's really like on it did he get kind of prepped or did he know what he was getting into and he sort of watched game tape or (laughs) oh all right so here's here's a the contrast between my parents and they're separated but yeah yeah um my dad Watches the show, loves the show, okay. loves being on TV. Oh, okay. My mom, nice. my mom doesn't even have cable. Okay, like she perfect. had to order past seasons to pre- get prepared for mine and figure out what's going on. She still to this day hates reality TV. Oh, she I doesn't understand it. why I did the show. She supports me. Yeah, she's a great yeah. mother, and she loves the. F- she loves that I'm happy, and she loves that I went through it. But yeah, she hates reality TV. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Your dad was kind of a star. You know, you guys look alike. You're good friends. Oh, I don't know. He he know he knew what he was doing. Okay, I always give him, okay. I was, he's always like, oh, don't put me on to don't put me on TV, and then he knows like right where to look <laughs> yes, and right yes. what to say. I'm like, you. That's exactly like, you what clown. It, <laughs> it seems like you kind of get good. it from your dad then, because he likes he was that scene, and that's your scene too, right? So you kind of yeah, get that from I'm, your father. I mean, you're not. I, I think I openly admitted that in a couple, I don't know if I did in the book, but in a couple interviews of like the broadcast boot camp and me being uh, media trained for the NFL mm-hmm. actually went against me because when you're so hyper aware of what's going yes. on at all times, you can't just relax and yeah. be you. So everybody's like, oh, he's scheming or mm-hmm. oh, he's not genuine. So I always had to fight that stigma where I was like, no, I just understand what's going on. Yeah. I'm just trying to make myself look the best that I can. Because yeah. that's the other thing too. It's like, these idiots sometimes they go on and they just get drunk and say the stupidest yeah. things. At least I'm aware enough to know yes. this is going to play to millions of people yes. who don't share the same beliefs as me, who are not going to understand where I'm coming from with this. So like I understood that, and there's nothing wrong or nothing scheming about it. It's just me sort of being hyper aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as a, as a guy, like I'm always curious: is there some place to work out in there? Because you're gone for a while. Yeah, and you know. Is there a gym inside there? And like when you're boozing every day like that, um, it's, yeah. it's hard to shed that for camera because otherwise you'll yeah. be too puffy or, you know, because some of those girls look, especially in the last season, boy, they were drinking a lot, drinking a lot, boozing a lot. <laughs> and I, I was mean, like, when yeah. you're your place 20s. to work out? Well, there it's is actually, it's a two hour, uh, two drinks per hour limit. So oh, you can't oh. Get really? too drunk. Really? Yeah, so there's a limit now um, since the whole Paradise <laughs> scandal thing Oh, that's happened. right. That's right. Oh, oh I had that's no right. Idea. Yeah. I this didn't even think thing. about that. So what, is but it like I a... got in trouble on my season because I don't I don't really drink that often. Um, I'll have a glass of wine with dinner and, you know, uh, maybe that you know, maybe that's it. But um, yeah. I was giving my drinks away because I was like, let's just get them drunk. The drunker they get, the better I look. Oh, so I was like <laughs> giving my drinks away. And I ended up getting caught. Oh, you sly dog. Kind of I knew yeah. it. I knew it. That's Hey, I will admit that's scheming. But, okay. yeah. but it was other okay. than that. It was, it was early on. And it was early on. Sure, sure, sure. And the, the, yeah. Yeah, that's, you're yeah, fine. No. You're fine. Yeah. And I yeah. like fine. that. If I was one of the girls getting the extra drink, I would be like, yes, I would be so brother. Happy. I'd be like, I love you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, is it is it an honor system? Like, is, there, is the I bartender know. saying like, "Hey, man"? No, you. We have a picture, and then he puts tallies next to you, and then oh. at the, al- at the oh hour erases the tally. No way. Who maxed out on your season? There had to have been somebody who maxed <laughs> out every two hours. Oh, Do you know? I, I think every guy Everyone? for the most part. I mean, you got to think like, especially with that, like they just wanted to get their buzz on and keep their edge. And I, I understood that uh, when I was the bachelor, I uh-huh. wanted to be. It was so weird because the first night is, I always say you can't prepare for it, but it's like a fine balance of being hydrated, buzzed, and caffeinated. <laughs> so, I like, so I was rotating between a glass like of wine, a yeah. coffee, a water, uh. another water, maybe another coffee, then I'd hit another glass of wine. Like I was trying to like stay alert, awake, Smart. but yet still like yes. take the edge off a little bit. Pro tip, you yeah. guys. Anybody out there going to be on The Bachelor? <laughs> you got to do that. That is a pro tip. Well, uh, yeah. another listener question was, did you really need the whole time to narrow it down to the, the last three? Or did immediately some people scream no for you right away? But yeah, I've always wondered like, that. Keep them on. Yeah. Um, there was. So the cool thing about the show is you come in thinking you want one thing or like having a type. But obviously you're on the show for a reason because your type and your thinking doesn't work. Yeah. So 
Um, I always try to be aware of that. But I mean, of course, there's there's different levels. Like I always describe Cass sort of as like a, a slow burn. Like she mm. wasn't one like right away. I was like, boom, that's it. But like she was always in the back of my mind. And like I was like always intrigued. And I was like, OK, there's something there, you know. Um, and then I t- said it in the book around week four was when I was like week four, week five after my Thailand date. Yep. I was like, OK, this it's game over. I think that's like, when I yeah, saw yeah, it yeah. too. In all honesty. But the other thing I always try to tell people and keep in mind too is I was aware we were filming a TV show. And if I want to sit down and have a conversation with people, I want it to be entertaining. I want it to be fun. I still want it to be a good conversation. Mm -hmm. So I want to keep the interesting people around. So everybody's like, oh, he's keeping this person because she's good TV. I was like, hell yeah, she is. And she also keeps me smiling and laughing. Exactly. I don't want to be bored this whole time. That's what a lot of people people wonder is because even my husband, I think it was on Peter's season. Um, Oh, I'm trying to think of her name. Was it Jackie? The one who was causing a lot of drama and arguing all the time. He goes, why does he keep keeping her on? But sometimes that's fun to have the drama around until that was, I was cool with the drama until until Cassie's name got brought up. And I was like, okay, drama's done. I was like, game over. Yeah. So that's the thing is some people wonder if it's producer driven and some people wonder if it's actually driven by you guys. Are you guys purposely keeping them on? So is it you or is it also the producer saying, hey, I mean, it's like a combo. Producers can't speak for you or they shouldn't shouldn't speak for you. So like the words that come out of your mouth, you're responsible for at the end of the day. Go, got it. Right. But it is true. Right, that um, they will talk to you. Like, you won't get to see all the girls all the time. They're the ones that have to tell you, hey, keep this girl or don't keep this girl, whatever, yeah, right? And, and you just have to trust on, them. Yeah, early on, you have to yeah. trust them. Yeah. And you have to, like, that's that's where, um, for me, it was tough because I have to trust them. I have to yes. lean on them. But then I also have to be aware that they have a show and they're really good at their jobs yes. and they put a good product out. So it's like, yes. got to figure, gotta figure out where that line is. Yes. Okay, I have a personal question because I have a terrible memory. And what, there's 30 girls on the first night that you're there? How in the world did you remember all their names? Do you have a microphone or something in your ear telling you their names? Or do you memorize them all? No, so... I, that's incredible about, like, every single time. When I sit time. down with them no, or the, so the, rose the rose ceremony? The rose ceremony. You literally call oh. them name by name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I leave after every three. <gasps> no way! Out, and they just cut it. Colton, thank oh you so much. Gosh, thank, thank you so much. Because the entire time in my head, I'm like, I it's am so... It's a little so awkward Im- while filming. But sure, like, right, they give you three because like- you have to look at the girl. And like on the yeah, first yeah, night, yeah. I don't... I know I might know a few names, but they have a, a map. I don't know. It helps that's me out. So oh, that's so smart. Because awesome. the, the entire girls time, always look so cold, too. Do. And I'm like, man, have they been standing Sitting there for a while? And then you're going somewhere else? Yeah. They're always Sometimes shivering. it takes like an hour to, to get through that. Oh, all right. All Some of them right. look like they're about to pass out and they look really tired. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because I felt like a shitty person going, dude, I can't remember someone's I could name. Never. I could never remember 30. Oh, you you want to know what's the funny thing about night one um, is the only – well, early on because I, I fixed I fixed my mistake because I was like, I'll just – I'll remember their names. I'll remember – or like before I sat with them, I would have my producer be like, okay, this is, you know, yes. Cassie or something. Well, the only person – that asked me, hey, do you remember my name? Or there was there was a few, there was three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the first person to do it to me was Cassie. And I didn't oh, remember her name. Oh. So <laughs> I was like, I scrambled. I was like, I remember you gave me this butterfly. So like oh, that was like sort Colton, of my kickback up. Cold, and there's but no coming there, back. But there, from there on out, I had a producer holding like a name yep. tag behind the girl so just so I could remember smart. it. That's great. That's, That's great. awesome. And I want to give you a little bit of shine too before we go. Um, you were... As The Bachelor, you were very nice. You were doing your job. But I have to say, when uh, you called it the cheese flipping incident, right? But like when you were sitting there with Cassie, right? And you could tell that you knew she was the one. You could tell something was up with her. As soon as she said her dad came, you looked off camera (laughs) to somebody. You don't have to say their name. But were you kind of shed everything and you just became a real dude and you were a badass from that point on because you were just like fuck this sorry excuse my language but you were just like fuck this I'm not doing this anymore whatever this is so were you looking off camera at a producer like are you fucking kidding me you know what's so funny is when that happened I was looking for a producer to look at and And no one was there nobody was there (laughs) they all ran away they all were gone so I was like okay Oh yeah. man! <laughs> well, but that kind of it turned like you just turned into. It's almost like the cameras just weren't even there anymore, 
and it yeah. was badass. I have to say, like you were you were so nice. You were really good. I didn't think that you were going to be the most badass bachelor, but you are. So yeah, thank you. I, I'm going to give you that. It. And we have uh, I, I've got some more questions <clears throat> here. Um, is race always gets brought up a lot? Um, do yeah. they yes. make you for for black guys and black girls who are on that show? Do they make you keep a certain number? Um, what, that question comes in a lot. Where I say, it's just yeah. like people get asked that a lot all too. the time. Yeah, people ask that. Yeah. yeah, I know, and I've I've dealt with that unfortunately too. And I think we all, even ABC deals with it too. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> there isn't like I you love who you love and yeah. you try to find. I didn't. I was open to whatever, mm. whenever, and that always the pressure of the audience was like oh he's keeping her around because of this yes. it's like mm. you guys are trying way too hard to connect the dots here because that's yeah. not the case it just is what it is uh, yeah uh, but it seems it like is, every season it really they is ask it that, yeah. really is what it is yeah because every season they ask and i always see it in the twitter comments where it's just like oh i wonder why he kept this one well you know you know and well, i'm sure you've read the, the most horrific comments about yourself at this time that you're just like eh. oh I'm, I'm yeah. done with it. Yeah. And even on the show, I got called, you know, I got called racist and even some comments in the book. I think there was like one or two people who were like, why would you say that about Tasha or stuff? And like, they would try oh to goodness. say, yeah. connect the dots. I was like, you guys, you guys yeah, can't just like, let's you know not, I mean? <laughs> yeah. People yeah. Look for let's not even they go there. Find it, yeah. You know what I mean? They'll look for anything if they want to find it. But I know for one sure. yeah. thing is that they, uh, Hannah Brown season. So they want it Mike after Hannah Brown season. They want it Mike to yeah. become the bachelor. Do you have any insight or do you have an opinion on why he didn't get picked, but why Peter got picked? Because after that was kind of when the race thing got brought up even more. Yes. And they did like the last 15 or so bachelors and it was all the, you know, a lot of you guys look very look similar. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I, I see it too. I'm yeah. completely on, on board with you. I have no clue. I mean, that's okay. obviously not my, I, I don't have any insight. I didn't know when I, I didn't know when I was getting picked until three hours before I needed yeah really get left out of that decision you don't know what factors go into it yeah i have never met i've never met mike i don't really know him that well but okay. i would say they probably had a good working relationship with peter or they knew that they could um i don't want to say control but they probably <laughs> they knew they knew that they could work him yeah better than some other people yeah. I, don't, I don't know i mean i really don't that's just my sure. educated guess no, yeah. yeah absolutely um is chris harrison as like fatherly and awesome as he seems if you if you have i wouldn't say fatherly i would actually i would deem chris more in the brotherly okay okay okay. he's a bro he's a bro okay i like off camera chris way better than i like on camera chris i I bet that's what i was hoping you would say chris is is probably like hey do you have a bump you know like he's a you want to get some shots he's a bro yeah he's a bro okay he's a bro is he married in real life what's his story no he's dating um uh lauren zima no way. So one of the, yeah. So he I dates one of the. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Everybody's finding love on the show. That's, That's crazy. Great. Uh-huh. Uh, what, what what was the major difference from going to the Bachelor to Bachelor in Paradise? Paradise is hell and. Bachelor mm-hmm. was fun. That's, that's, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, it seems, seems like, like a nightmare to me. Yeah, I didn't have a good. I didn't have a good time. And it just wasn't my scene. Like uh, you, you sort of could day drink, hang out. I, I liked eating the chips and guac, and I liked like getting a tan. <laughs> but like the drinking thing I, didn't really appeal to me. The the no doors at the facilities. Like crabs were in your bag. There was sand everywhere. It just wasn't. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't my style of vacation. Yeah, because yeah. even paradise, if you're just sitting around with nothing to do, can get <clears throat> boring, huh? It seems like they're bored. Oh a lot yeah, there. right. Yeah. You're just like, okay, I've laid out. Well, <laughs> my, mine wasn't too boring because they always had me in some sort of drama going they on. They did. But, uh, they love to put you in that drama. What's, yeah. What's the yeah. shooting difference like uh, as far as months on the Bachelor in Paradise and, and on on the Bachelor? Oh, uh, we were filming. We were filming Paradise as you guys were watching episode two of The Bachelorette. So we didn't even get to watch our beginning chunk of our season for the most part. Like, I think, uh, you know what? Hold on. Let me, let me correct myself. I don't know. It's it was a while. I know Jason was at my premiere in Denver. Mm -hmm. So he came to watch that. And then I think I left for Paradise shortly after that, like week two or week three. And then I was there for like 10 days or something. That's crazy. Okay. They just crank these out. Oh, yeah. Don't they? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, yeah. going, going back to, to Jesse's comment earlier about the machine, um, you know, and I know you said you're done with this this chapter of your life in The Bachelor. And, I, and we personally think that's great. Yeah. Um, because there is people that it seems like, man, if there's not another season where they're invited back to, they can't keep this train going. Mm-hmm. It seems like there yeah. is professional 
bachelor and bachelorettes that are on forever yeah. and ever and ever. Um, did right. you notice that? And did you <clears throat> chat with them about it? Of like, hey man, are you trying to come back again? Nick Vale. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> I don't. I don't because what? It, I mean, if that makes them happy, that makes them happy. Who am I to to judge them for what they want out of their lives? For me, I don't want to just keep being a reality person. Yeah. I want to. I have more goals, more dreams, more aspirations, and I want my identity to be something more than just a yeah. bachelor. Yes. Do you want to do a podcast? Um, I actually have something I've been working on. Um, oh my gosh. That's coming out soon. Look yeah, you. you're really it's, good on podcasts. It's more, I would say it's more like it's more talk showy than it is. Okay. I don't know. It, I feel weird calling it a podcast because yeah, yeah. I feel like everybody everybody's like, oh, another podcast to go listen to. Tell you know me I mean? about it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, <laughs> but yes, it's it's something similar, something on that edge that I'll be announcing okay. here soon. Yeah, yeah, it's cool be because great. yeah, you have the type of personality that can cross over. And and you know, my next question was going to be. What is your dream going forward? Like, do you want to be like Jesse Palmer? Do you want to host a bunch of stuff? Do you want to do the Thursday night games for college football? I mean, that would be rad. Yeah, um, I love storytelling. Um, I love sharing other people's stories. I do that with my nonprofit. I do that just, I think, on a daily basis. So I think having um, a platform or a way or a show or a segment to share people's stories um, and just really make it meaningful and purposeful. Whatever I do next in life, I want it to be meaningful and purposeful. And I want it obviously to be on camera and on TV is the career um, for me. So for yeah, that's that's sort of what's next. And what is the name of the nonprofit again? That you're, you're still doing it's it, called, right? Yeah, it's called the Legacy Foundation. It supports cystic fibrosis, which is a respiratory disease. So right now it's even more yeah. um, it's severe because I mean, they, they're they all knocked down. What we are going through right now as a, as a world cystic fibrosis patients have to practice every day like yeah. they practice social distancing every day they have to stay six feet away from other cfers and they also have to be very conscious of germs and bringing in bacteria and, and viruses and yeah it's gnarly whoa what made you become passionate about that was someone yeah. in, your, in your family have cystic yeah. fibrosis yeah my cousin was born with it um mm. mine 2013 2012 2013 she was born with it just be um right when i was getting ready to go into the nfl Oh, That's man. so awesome that yeah. it's so near to your, yeah. near and dear to your heart, and you're doing something about it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's Thank amazing. You. Uh, now's the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro and drinking bro at of the week, which mm -hmm. is someone who's inspired you, someone who's helped you become the person you are today. Uh, who would you like to give that award away to? And it can be anybody, man or woman. Um, you know what? It feels appropriate. I love my mom and dad. They've been very, very good to me, and they've helped raise me. But I'm going to go with coach Nowinski, which yes. if you, yeah. book, you, know, yes. you know who he is. Yes. Um, he was, you know, I, he's someone who honestly, I love my dad, but I always text on father's day too, to be like, Hey, happy, you know, happy father's day. I appreciate the role you played in my life. He just was always there for me and sort of was at a very, he was in my life at a very pivotal moment where I was, I needed help. I needed people outside of just mom and dad to be there for me. So I would like to give it to him because he's just an overall what I would consider a mentor and an idol and somebody who I look up to. That's awesome. Oh, good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, go ahead. Love that. one last thing, and we'll end <laughs> yeah, on this we, awesome note. We get asked all the time, Colton, were you down for those shower scenes? Was that your idea? Was that producer's idea? Oh, <laughs> but was, you know what? They, got a shower? they were like, they were like, the shower scenes are taking off. We had really good response. We had a full day of filming and like, or a half day, I guess, of filming. Really? In like a mansion in LA, we went to every bathroom and just filmed different Stop shower scenes. Stop it! <laughs> and I they tried wondering. to make it seem yeah because you were the only bachelor I think in history where it was just every scene like you know when you're talking you know and they but you know what it's so crazy I, I gained like 12 pounds during the show and I became I was very insecure about my uh -huh. body because I was like uh, I'm growing and I can't do anything about it because I'm taping till 4 a.m. yeah exactly and no time to work out yeah um but you know what I just rolled with the punches I was like let's do it yeah do you ever like, get asked you're gonna have to a, you're gonna have a chunk at the end of this but let's do it <laughs> let's do, do you get it. asked to do shower scenes anymore for anything like for random things or no <laughs> No, I enjoy my showers. I enjoy my there baths. I'm actually a bath guy over a shower. But what? Really? Oh, Interesting factoid. I'm surprised like Dove yes. or anybody didn't reach out after that. I know, and give me you too. A huge deal for I, you know, Head showers. and Shoulders. Somebody. I'm yeah, surprised right? it's not on head a Herbal and Essence commercial yeah. or something. Um, and then uh, if we say Carol Baskin to you, what do oh, you think? Yeah, she did oh, it. 
I know that name, but I've <gasps> I've only watched episode five in You've part six. You've been kind of busy. I need to read. You've been kind of busy. To... Okay. But you've seen four, yes. though, which four goes into her history about uh, killing her husband. So do you think? Oh, no, I've seen five and six. Five in part of six. I haven't oh, seen okay. Four. Oh, yeah. okay. Seen four. okay. So he's saying yeah. he but can't. But I heard there's make... a new episode coming out. Next I know week. this Mecca. week. This week. So, oh, this week. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This I lose track of time in this. Exactly, little... dude. I hear you. We this all do. Month in quarantine. What's been your top quarantine show so far? Um, the 100, and then I also been watching a lot of like stand-up comedy. Joe Rogan's was really funny. Nice. Kevin Hart's documentary was great. Um, oh, was yeah, wasn't it? We watched it on Netflix. Yeah. 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 Kevin yeah. Hart's was great. Ozark. You getting down on Ozark at all? I'm episode uh, one of Ozark, but I really like it, and Ooh. I'm a big J- Jason Bateman fan, so, it's so I, I need to get yes. back into that. I'm jealous because I wish I could restart me it. Me too. Yes. Uh, that's what so everybody good. told oh. me, so I can't wait. It's so good. All right. Uh, yeah. Knowing what you know now, if you and Cassie had a yep. child, would you allow them to go on The Bachelor and or Bachelorette? Um, I, I would support them. If, they, if that's what they wanted to do, that's what they wanted to do. I don't. I'll give him my opinions and I'll maybe give him some tips or him or her some tips to like, be like, watch this, do yeah, this, yeah, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever persuade them one way or another. I think that's important just to be there to listen, understand and help guide. I don't ever want to be like, you need to do this. You need to do that. That's awesome. I love that. That's awesome. Well, tell everybody yeah. uh, where they can find the book and where they can find you on social media. Yeah, so the book is called uh, The First Time, and it's Finding Myself and Looking for Love on Reality TV, and you can find it on Amazon. I know Target has it. Practice social distancing if you're at the store. I, I, it's not an essential, but <laughs> yeah. grab it if you want. Um, and uh, it's available on all audiobooks. I actually read and recorded the book myself, so you can listen to me talk if you want for six hours. Um, if not, totally understandable, and you could get it on Kindle, too. Online. Yeah, oh, yeah. Th- that audiobook has a brutal process, isn't it? Oh, it was very tedious, but you know, it, <laughs> I felt like it was very appropriate, especially something so personal to me that I read it and not somebody else. Same. And whenever it's the British guy, I'm always checked out immediately when I'm just like, <laughs> exactly. I want to hear the people. Exactly. Yeah, 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 we yeah. all know Colton Underwood. I want to hear him read it his own not British. memoir, for yeah. Christ's yeah. sakes. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, listen, it was an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for coming on Thanks, Drinking buddy. Bros and uh, the Drinking Broettes crossover episode. Yes. Please go out and purchase Colton's book. Uh, again, practice social distancing if you're doing it at Target. And you can order Just it from Amazon. Amazon it. Yeah, Amazon it. or Audible. Yeah. Uh, for, for Colton Underwood, Tiffany Hart, Jesse Wiseman, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros and Drinking Bro. That's crossover episode. Good night, everyone. See you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you guys. Thanks Thank you. so much, Colton. Absolutely. Hey, I got to hop on another interview real quick. You guys are fantastic. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, buddy. I'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.